All right, everyone, welcome back to the Media Center at the HSBC Women's World Championship. I'm happy to be joined by LPGA Commissioner Molly Marcusamon. Molly's about six months into the job now, excited to, uh, to get the opportunity to work with Molly. Molly, welcome to Singapore. Thank I know you. you said this is your first time on this side of the globe at all. Uh, how do you feel about uh, visiting Singapore, this, this lovely country? Are you, are you finally getting some sleep? Uh, well, first of all, thank you everyone for joining us this morning. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, Singapore has been amazing, uh, despite the fact that sleep is a little more difficult and doing work back with the folks in the U.S. has been a little challenging on the time frames, but otherwise it's absolutely beautiful. The people have been amazingly hospitable and, um, you know, just enjoying every bit of it. So let's go back to, to this time last year. You were still in uh, discussions to becoming the LPGA commissioner, going through that process. What was it that really interested you in this opportunity as commissioner of the LPGA? Yeah, I mean, listen, I had a, a, a job that I absolutely loved, but when this opportunity presented itself to me, it, it felt like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because I think there's so much momentum in women's golf, first of all, and I believe in golf and the power of golf, and I believe in our, our athletes. I've been a big fan of the LPGA since I was a little girl, um, and I saw this as this moment in time to really change mindsets around women's golf, around women's sports, and to really inspire the next generation of of young girls and women through our game and through our amazing athletes. I think there is tremendous, as I said, tremendous interest in women's sports right now. And, and there's this fundamental shift in how people are viewing our athletes. No longer, I think, particularly in this part of the world, our, our athletes are not the other. You know, they're the, the main show in many, many forums. And so I'm just really excited to be a part of that and to be able to showcase and highlight the, the talent and the opportunity for, for growth and change. We truly are growing, but like, like all sports, like so many businesses, had the struggles over the last two years during the pandemic. How do you feel we've been able to manage these last two years, and where do you see us now as we're coming out, hopefully, on, on the other side of this difficulty? Yeah, I mean, listen, obviously, it goes without saying, COVID has been extremely challenging for every organization, let alone every sports organization. Obviously, in my role as athletic director at Princeton, we were uh, working very hard every day to manage through the challenges. I I've been blown away by the, by the way the LPGA and all of its partners, um, and, and partners very broadly, both our sponsors sponsors and our media partners and the golf courses that we've played with and our vendors, how people have, and really the industry as a whole, how people have come together um, with the, the, good of the, the good of the order, the good of the team at hand. And so surprisingly and shockingly, we entered the pandemic um, at something around you know, low $70 million in purses. I think in 2019, we, we had $67 million in purses. And now in 2022, through the pandemic, we're at 90.2 million in purses and 34 events that are really thriving. And that's a tribute to the staff, as I said, the partners, but also the players. I mean, the way that they have handled the uh, the need to be flexible, the need to be a part of a team and to just do what they need to do to, to be able to provide this, honestly, inspiration to the world, to be able to see the women playing, to get back to some semblance of order, not in the way that they normally do it, um, has been really remarkable. And I will say there's a tremendous tremendous amount of gratitude from our players. There's a tremendous amount of optimism for the future. They're just an amazing group. I mean, it feels much more to me like a, a full team than it is women competing against each other. I always say it feels like a college athletic department, even though every day they're going out and trying to be the very best in the world. There's a sense of community. There's a sense of belonging. There's a sense of passion for acting like a founder. I mean, that's the phrase that we use. So I think, you know, despite the many challenges in the world and the hard of all of COVID, the LPGA has come out, you know, really ready to take that next step. So now you're six plus months under the job. You've been able to meet so many people over here, meeting the executives from HSBC and Aon and various other people. Where do you hope to take the LPGA tour in the next few years? What's your vision for the beginning of your commissionership? Yeah, I mean, as I said, the, the partners that we have, including HSBC, I mean, it's been amazing being here. The way that they, the golf course and, and you know, obviously HSBC and all the other sponsors have really embraced and the way they embrace our athletes is remarkable. I mean, they realize that providing 
providing the right environment will allow our athletes to reach their peak performance. So um, I think that the, the, the way that the athletes have been treated are sort of commensurate with their world-class talent. And I think that's something we're seeing across the board. I think we're seeing um, not only that, but we're seeing that many, many partners are seeing the LPGA as an opportunity, not just to, to, to have a return on their actual investment, but to, to change the world through this platform and to talk about their own company values. And I know that's really near and dear to what HSBC is doing, is to use this platform to talk about their, their goals in sustainability, their goals in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to inspire the world through this, you know, sort of talking about the pay equity conversation. So, so obviously our partners are really important. At the, We have six pillars that we're working on of. One is to provide the very best schedule with the highest possible purses where our women can make the, the best living commensurate with their world-class talent, as I said, but also where our partners are able to use our platform to, to um, push their um, company values and their agendas and their ways of thinking about changing the world. I think we also are really in tune to this idea of player excellence and player performance and actually LPGA professional experience, the staff experience. So how do we create an environment for everyone within our ecosystem to reach their, their own peak performance. And that goes to the things I just talked about, making it as easy as possible for our women to get the most sleep that they need, to get the, you know, to, to eat properly when they come to tournaments, to have the administration taking care of them so they can focus on being the best that they can be. Um, so performance excellence is really important. We're really focused on getting the world to know our athletes better. I think many of you who are on this call, you obviously have gotten to know our, our women and they're not not only best in the world on the golf course, but the work that they do off the golf course to inspire young girls, to, to provide help in various charities, whatever it is they're passionate about, um, and to just be role models to so many people. So I think our, our goal is to focus on marketing, communications, you know, sort of media, technology. How do we uh, do, do as good of a job as we possibly can do to bring our athletes to the world? And that's, again, not just you know, in one part of the world, but all over the world. Because I think we've seen, as we go into communities, we inspire people. We inspire people young and old. And so that's really important for us to focus on that technology and the data and marketing um, and getting our, our fans to know our players better. Um, we're also really in tune to this idea that golf's a gift. And so how do you give this game to more people? Um, we, we, we call it changing the face of the game. And, you know, the, the industry as a whole is, is sort of calling this make golf your thing. And we're trying to work very intentionally to give the game to people who might not otherwise feel comfortable playing the game or might not have the financial resources to play. So we're really intentional about that through our work in the foundation, through the inspiration that our, that our LPGA and Epson players provide and, and LET players. Um, and the other thing is, the, the fifth goal is this integration of all parts of the LPGA. The LPGA is driven by the LPGA Tour, but we also have this really impactful uh, foundation which focuses on you know our USGA LPGA girls golf program where we're bringing the, the game to you know uh, hundreds of and thousands of kids a year um, through the girls' golf program, through our leadership academies. We also have a very robust women's amateur program. Um, and again, sports build leaders and build community, and they're really important to, to society, particularly in times that are that are tough. So, and then we have this remarkable LPGA professionals. We have uh, over 1,800 women, uh, largely women, uh, in, in our LPGA professional program who are teaching the game to, as I said, tens of thousands of people. And and so, how do we integrate? integrate all parts of that. So we have this kind of all parts of the women's golf and girls golf ecosystem. And how do we make one plus one equal three and using our assets in all ways. So an example of that is bringing our LPGA professionals onto our broadcast and having them sort of analyze our players swings and give give our audience and our fans an opportunity to learn more about the, the golf swing because we all know that's something we're constantly trying to tackle, myself included. And then the sixth pillar is really how do we how do we continue to build a sustainable future for the LPGA? How do we think about this as thriving rather than just surviving? And I think over the last few years, that's what the LPGA has seen, you know, getting to some of these remarkable numbers, 
10 million dollars for the US Open um, you know I think 12 12 tournaments increased their purse this year um, you know the CME going to two million dollars for the winner and forty thousand dollars if you make the CME uh, championship so things like that the Aon risk reward which is a, a phenomenal program and then just continuing like I said to have more sponsors like HSBC honestly who who see the value in our our players so thinking creatively about how we build that overall sustainable um, infrastructure for the LPGA. So we've had, uh, we've kicked off the season in Florida. We're now here in Asia, the first of our two swings. I wanted to ask you about the tournaments in Asia. Do you see a, a change maybe there to, to the number of times you come over here? What are the state of things here with our, our partnerships across Asia? Yeah, I mean, listen, we love, we're a global uh, global tour and we're really proud of that. And, and so we are constantly looking, going back to one of my fundamental pillars that I talked about at the beginning, you know, we're sort of looking about how we move around the world. So it's good for the communities where we go and the partners that we work with, but it also makes sense for our players. You know, you can imagine uh, traveling and then we going into different time zones and you need to be able to get the right rest. And so we're working very intentionally on how to give them tips to do that. They're working on their own with their team around the team to do that. But so right now we're certainly talking to partners around the globe and, and we love playing in Asia. I mean, it's, it's uh, really something that the players look forward to. They've been raving about this week. I know they're looking forward to next week as well. Um, obviously we go we go through Europe and then we come back to Asia again. So um, we're a global tour and we're really proud of that and we're going to continue to work with partners all over the world. A reminder to those of you on Zoom, if you have any questions, let me know in the chat or use the hand raise function. Um, I do have another question for the commissioner for me. We've talked about now about Asia. How about our relationship with the Ladies European Tour? Went into the joint venture uh, about two years ago. Great partnership. How's that partnership going on with the LET? Yeah, I mean, it's been a phenomenal partnership. They have tremendous leadership there um, in Alex Armas and her team. They're a small but mighty team. But our team's been sort of digging in with them and sharing best practices and supporting them along the way. And it's, um, you know, we're really excited because we're, we, we're thinking about how you provide a, a global pathway to the LPGA, the LPGA being the very best women's golf tour in the world that we're really proud of. So the LET, like the LPGA, has grown significantly since the joint venture occurred. I mean, I think they were at somewhere around $11 million in purses in 2019. And I think they're going to be at uh, over 20 million this year, 23 million in 2022, which again is a remarkable number. I think there are 30 events on the tour. So I think we've helped them uh, grow and get better. And I think they've helped us in, in the way that they approach things and the attitudes that they have. And and the players from Europe are, are phenomenal. Obviously, we have great players in Europe. We have great players in Asia. We have great US uh, players. We have great players from other parts of the world. So I think this idea of global golf is really important. And the partnership has been tremendous so far. And we're just in this joint venture now, and we'll see where the future holds. Great. We are going to go to the Zoom where we have a question from Spencer Robinson. Spencer, you can unmute your line, please. Maybe. There you are. Spencer, we can see you. We can't hear you. John, do we think that's on our end or Spencer's end? Okay. Let me see. I see something popping up here in the chat. Give me just a moment. It is from Spencer. Looks like he might be having some audio problems. Question from Spencer, Molly. Um, uh, do you see the LPGA Tour perhaps returning to Asia anytime soon or any other venues, uh, tournaments that may be of interest? Like I said, I mean, we're constantly evaluating the, the flow, the geographic flow of our entire tour. And, you know, we have a tremendous team uh, working in Korea and obviously our team in, in the U.S. constantly looking at various opportunities. We work really closely with IMG internationally. So we are always exploring different opportunities. Nothing that I can sort of announce right now, but we certainly are fully engaged in those conversations. And we, we love playing all over the world. Absolutely. I got the chance to work that last event in, uh, in Malaysia at Slime Derby. It was great. Thank you so much, Spencer. Again, let me know here in the chat if you have any further questions. Um, Molly, overall, as you're looking back at the first six months, what have been some of the biggest takeaways for you that perhaps were surprises as you look at the beginning of your tenure? 
Well, I mean, I've always known how talented our, our athletes are, but I think when you see them up front and when you, when you get to know them, you be, just become that much more inspired by their talent, which is enormous. And I think our you know, KPMG Insight Performance Insight Program has allowed us to get some more data that just shows what we've always known and just how accurate they are, how talented they are, how, how really good they are. Um, and so that's been really fun to see up close and personal, but it's also been great to see how much they care about the LPGA. Not, and honestly, how much so many people care about the LPGA. Um, it really does feel like a community and a team, as I said before. Our partners are some of the most passionate people about what we do, and we're grateful for what they provide for us, and, and hopefully they're, they're grateful for the opportunity they have to engage with the, the best athletes in the world. So I think it's a, it's always about people um, for me, and, and I think seeing how committed everyone is, I call it the team around the team, how committed everyone is to our growth path. And not just you know to allow the women to live their dreams through golf, which is really what our overall mission is, but to inspire the world and, and, and empower people to see what greatness can look like and to see kind of how the world can change, particularly around women's sports and this mindset shift that women's sports are, are not just the other, but they're, they're a real formidable force of good in the world. I have a question here on the Zoom from a group in Thailand asking your thoughts on, on the Thai players on the LPGA Tour and how incredibly impressive they are. I'm looking at our leaderboard right now. Ataya Titikul is three under on her round through five holes, but looking at Ataya and Patty and Mo and May, and as we look to next week at the Honda LPGA Thailand, can you talk a little bit about our Thai players and the excitement they bring to the tour? Yeah, I mean, I've had the opportunity to get to know a lot of a lot of the women, and I've actually played with uh, Moria, and we had, a, we had a great time. She did capture my swing on social media, which maybe wasn't the greatest, but actually it was, it was very funny. She, she asked permission to post the swing, but their, their energy, their passion is phenomenal, and their talent is indisputable. So I really, um, I, again, I think that's one of the most fun parts of this job is that you get to know people from all over the world that have come from different backgrounds who are just passionate and talented and devoted and committed to being great. So I think the, the Thailand is producing some amazing um, golfers right now. Another question from the Zoom is actually about uh, the Epson tour and the recent announcement that Epson is taking over as the developmental tour. What are your plans for that? Do you see perhaps any co-sanctioning or continued growth of, of opportunities like that on this side of the world and continuing to grow that developmental path? Yeah, and again, talking about the you know the the Epson tour and Epson has similar to HSBC and other partners, you know, they they see this as a tremendous business opportunity for them to talk about their brand and to to build a brand of awareness, but, um, and their CEO has made it very clear that the decision that they made was about, you know, a very sound business decision, but also they, they saw it as a real opportunity to talk about their values, talk about their commitment to women's leadership, talk about their commitment to pay equity. Um, so the way that they've structured the relationship with us really gives our women that opportunity to live their dreams, which is ultimately what we're doing. So this idea that they have 10 ambassadors when you graduate from the, the Epson tour and you come on to the LPGA tour, that, that they will provide a, a little bit of a, a little bit of roadway for you from a financial standpoint. It's expensive to play out here. So they're creative with how they're approaching it. Um, they're thinking about the registration fees for or the, the, the entry fees for all of the Epson events and trying actually to work with us to get a few more partners to reduce the entry fees to make it more feasible for women to be out there on the Epson tour playing and trying to get to the LPGA. So, um, you know, it's, it's partnerships like that that are creative and thoughtful and thinking about ways that we can make the experience for our players that much better. So, and again, there's a great pathway. I think we're talking to the LET about various pathways to get to the LPGA from the LET or just continuing to build up their tour like they've done to have 30 events at $23 million in purses. You know, if, if that that's the path that women want to play, then that's a, a terrific opportunity there too. So I think it's about the global golf approach. Great. Do we have any further questions on the Zoom for Molly? Looks like we might be winding down. Well, overall, Molly, what has this experience been like the last three days? I know it's been a whirlwind, quick trip in, quick trip yes. out, but your first opportunity to come over here and, and see the Asia swing in action, what are your biggest takeaways from these two days? 
yeah, I think it's just what I said before. People love um, people love the LPGA. I think Singapore loves the LPGA. Obviously, HSBC and uh, Lexus and the other partners here uh, love the LPGA. And, and our women love being here. I've heard so many compliments and positive um, sort of experiences so far. So I'm thrilled that I made the trip. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to watch some amazing golf today. I know you guys are all watching and the leaderboard is pretty packed at the top and everybody's playing pretty well. And, and so anything can happen, but we've just, I mean, our athletes are remarkable. What, what they do consistently week in, week out, and uh, they're, they're playing great. We did just have one final question pop in, and then we'll let you go. Um, wanted to, to ask about the emergence of young stars in the region. We've talked about Ataya a little bit, but this question is particularly about Yuka Sasso. Grew up in the Philippines, plays under the Japanese flag now, clearly a, a young player of the world, but what she's been able to do the last year since, uh, since she won that U.S. Women's Open and gained her LPGA membership. Yeah, I remember, you know, as I was watching that, I was thinking I have an I have an 18-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old son. And seeing the way that, you know, and they're great athletes and great kids and work really hard, but seeing her on that world stage, you know, for the first time during the U.S. Open, I, I was blown away by her her. Um, kind of uh, calmness and her ability to handle the pressure. And then she just has come out and been a huge part of the LPGA since since that moment. I mean, I, her smile is infectious. You know, she's very popular out here. And so she's just another example of a young star that is inspiring people through her on the course work and her off the course personality. And, you know, it's great to see her in some commercials, right? I mean, I think that's the other thing that's happening in the industry is you'll see some of our, our partners, our manufacturers, you know, putting, highlighting our women in really important ways through their own, um, you know, international, national commercials. So um, you guys just an example of the young talent that's out there. And speaking of young talent, we've got another name, uh, Shi Yu Janet Lin from China, who's making a little run this morning playing yeah. well. Do you think about Janet and what, what she's doing for China? And I know Janet specifically graduated from an HSBC junior program. So seeing that footprint there in China continuing to grow as well. Yeah, I mean, that's again, there's, there's, uh, there's opportunities to advance to this level. And our job is to make it so when they get here, they are truly, um, you know, operating with the best in the world. And, and I think that's what makes the LPGA so amazing. It's that it's not the best in this region. It's truly the best in, in the world. And that's exciting. And that's a platform that we're really proud of. The questions are popping in fast and furious now. We won't take much more of your time. Are there any key markets that you would specifically targeting, maybe in, both in Asia, but in Europe, around the world, any specific areas you're looking at? I mean, again, I, I think golf is growing everywhere. I mean, I think that's the beauty of the game. And, and women's golf is so powerful in different parts of the, the world. Um, so, and, you know, again, we're looking at all markets, so I can't pinpoint one specifically. But I think we do want to think about, as I said before, kind of how that works for our players, you know, sort of how we, we take them through at a geographic flow, both domestically and internationally, a, dom a, a flow that works for them so they can be the very best that they can be. So I think we always have to be aware of their travel schedule schedules, the time change differences, how we kind of have a series on the West Coast, on the East Coast, in the Midwest, how we come to Asia and, and clump the events um, so it's as easy as possible for them to, to travel and as you know inexpensive as it is for them to travel. So we're really grateful for the way that a lot of our partners help them with that. But we're looking, you know, we there's, there's not really a market that we're not looking in. Great. And Malkit, I can answer this question for you directly. We have 34 events on our 2022 LPGA calendar with two new events, one being the JTBC Championship at Palos Verdes in Los Angeles, and the other being the Kroger Queen City Championship presented by P&G in Cincinnati. Looks like maybe we've gotten through everything. I think we've covered everything. I know you head back tomorrow, Molly, yes. but uh, oh, one more, one more. And then I promise we're going to call it a day. And this is actually specifically talking about Japan. We actually haven't mentioned Japan out of a, outside of a quick mention of, of Yuka. We're seeing big uh, success from Japanese golfers, men and women, NASA, Yuka playing under the flag, now Hinako winning AIG a few years ago, and now here this week. What are you? What are what are your thoughts on, on Japanese golf? At seeing such success, Hideki Matsuyama on the men's side, 
of that coming up in, in the country of Japan. Yeah, I mean, listen, I was really, I was I was planning on going to Japan in the fall. I was hoping to be able to make that trip. And, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to going back uh, this coming fall. But it's the same in a lot of regions, right? I mean, the talent, and that's why it's so fun looking down our leaderboard. I mean, it's not one country dominating. I mean, obviously, the, the Korean players still remain unbelievable. And, and uh, the Japanese players are coming on. We've got some great talent in the U.S. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I think uh, you, you nailed it, but I, I do think that it's the sport's growing everywhere, and we're so proud of that, and I think we have a, a part in that. When you can put the women from different regions on the world stage, then it just inspires young girls to play. It inspires sponsors and people to get involved and to support what we're doing. So it is truly one of the most global, if not the most global organization out there, and we're very proud of that. Great. Well, thank you so much, Molly. We appreciate your time. Safe travels going home, thank and we you. will see you down the road at the next event. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your support of the LPGA. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll send around a transcript as soon as this is done. Thank you very much.